Ready to go? All right. Hello, um, hello. Okay. Is it okay? Oops. Yep. Let us welcome Mr. Don Freda, Vice President of Articulate. He'll be sharing about interactive video made us easy with Articulate Storyline today. Let us welcome him. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So we're here to talk about interactive video, uh, and I think it's actually quite a, uh, quite a timely conversation as video has evolved. I've been in this industry for over 10 years, and uh, we're really at a point now where I think video can become, easily become a major uh, strategy in terms of your e-learning development. Um, just by uh, briefly, for a brief, brief introduction, my name again, Don Fried. I'm uh, in charge of international sales for Articulate, which for us means everything outside of North America. Uh, we work through a partner network of over 60 partners worldwide, uh, including our partner here uh, in Malaysia, uh, eLearning Minds, where you can find me after the session if you'd like some more information. The company was founded in 2002 in New York City. We've grown to uh, over 140 employees in seven countries now and, and uh, are generally considered the leader when it comes to uh, uh, quick and easy e-learning development uh, and Storyline, uh, a product that was introduced a couple years ago, has really taken the e-learning world by storm. Studio uh, is another award-winning product that we offer uh, that is uh, perfect for those of you who are PowerPoint-centric developers. We're going to be focusing on Storyline today because it does do some uh, allows you to do some very cool things with video. And let's just talk a little bit about video. Um, the reason video in the past has been probably shunned or not used as much as you might think, it, obviously very expensive to produce. Uh, costs for video uh, could be in the thousands of dollars uh, per, per minute <laughs> in terms of uh, final production costs. Very time consuming. You couldn't rapidly produce something and get it out the door uh, quickly to your learners. And of course, there was huge file sizes. The compression technology was just not there, which made it very hard to deploy uh, or distribute your, your video and difficult to maintain. If you shot a video and then uh, something changed with a product or a policy or a procedure, you were, you were, you were, it was very difficult to go back and edit the video. You had to basically go back and produce the video all over again. Where are we today? Uh, it's become quite inexpensive and easy. Uh, most people have a, f uh, a better video camera on their iPhone or their iPhone or smartphone today than uh, you could have had for thousands of dollars several years ago. So, uh, very good quality from your from your smartphone, and it's very easily downloaded or streamed. Uh, compression technology, uh, bandwidth in general, is so much better than where it was just a few years ago uh, that it allows uh, quick and easy deployment and and really makes video video very practical for for e-learning applications. Why would you want to use video in your e-learning? Uh, first and foremost, I think it's, it is immersive. Uh, you are bring, pulling the learner into a reality that is very difficult to establish just with words or even images. Uh, you know, if a picture is worth a thousand words, uh, a clip of video could be worth 10,000. So you want to think about that uh, in terms of the context of the learning as well. Uh, difficult sometimes to establish context when it's just text. Uh, maybe some images can help, but in a video, you pull the learner into the reality you're trying to establish very quickly. It's quite novel as well. It, it kind of looks different uh, than most people are used to seeing uh, when you talk about online e-learning or PowerPoint-based e-learning, where clip art tends to be very common um, and, and stock images. Uh, the video is going to personalize and uh, make, make, the, make the learning interesting. And it can be very effective. Uh, the nuances that a video would expose, let's say, in a, in a particular process, uh, maybe an assembly process, or in the case of, of learning, um, you know, maybe something uh, with hands-on uh, lab work or something like that, a video could get uh, way more, can, can provide way more detail and nuance than, than text and pictures ever could. So, Oh, one more point about compression. Uh, we've spent a lot of time at Articulate thinking about compression. I want to just sort of give you an idea of the amount of compression. Uh, this is the original file here. Uh, this was a video background that was used in a, in a course by one of our customers. 3.14 gigabytes. Once uh, published with Storyline, 1.2 megabytes. 
very little loss of fidelity. So you're not sacrificing quality anymore uh, when you talk about incorporating video into your courses. So let's look at some examples. This is one of my favorites. Uh, anybody who's a fan of the Keurig uh, brewing uh, uh, device, you'll recognize this. I'm not sure why. Is that showing up okay? All right. A little off center here. But um, so what you're going to see here, this is a video on how to use the Keurig brew, brew, Brewer. Um, for most of us, uh, we have, if you have experience with this, this is going to be sort of uh, a review. And that's one of the great things about using video is for someone who's experienced, they can just watch the video as sort of a refresher, but someone who wants more detail with storyline, you're able to allow them the option to drill down and get more detail. So let's take a look at this. Let me start the video. And what you're going to see here, uh, during the different steps of the process, we have these little call outs here, these little buttons. And I can click on that to drill down and get more information on this particular step. Note the video in the background paused to allow, uh, so the user doesn't miss anything and allow the user time to read here and then we click continue and we go to the next step. Note the position of the, of the buttons uh, is critical and uh, obviously very easy flex, easy, easily done, uh, very flexible with storyline. So here we have another one. So again, if you kind of know what you're doing here or you have an idea, you don't have to click and stop. It gives you the flexibility to allow for some of that drill down versus uh, just sort of a quick refresher. Oops, there we go. And then one more. And so this is one example of how to make your video interactive. And I'm, I'm gonna actually show you how this was done in the product. Uh, in just a, in a few in a few moments, but I want to give you an idea what the finished product might look like. So that's a that's a pretty good instructional video, and it covers a lot of ground in a matter of a couple minutes. Let's uh, let's see. Um, let me get back here. Oops. Another. Uh, conversation I have often is, well, okay, if I want to show a video, a clip, a video, a video clip, and then allow the user to make a choice after that video, how can I do that? Well, Storyline supports a branching solution um, that you'll see here. This is a very sort of simple example, but um, it, uh, it does allow the user to interact with the video and actually make a choice through, uh, where do we go here? So this is a, uh, a scenario that was developed again by one of our customers. Let me see, it does have some audio here. I'm turn it down. Okay, you're not... There was a fire alarm there, you didn't hear it. So now you're being asked, okay, the fire alarm sounds, uh, what do you wanna do? So you have three choices, and based on the choice, you're gonna see a different video. So in this first choice, it shows us uh, the, the result of our choice. <laughs> All right, so let's go, let's go back here. So then you have some, you can provide some feedback as well. Let's start this over. I want to show you just another, uh, another possible outcome here. Uh, one minor design tip I would say, I like to have the, uh, the slider here, so you can fast forward a little bit if you'd like. This, this author did, chose not to do that. 
All right, so let's go ahead and choose this option. Just to demonstrate that when this option is selected, you're going to see a different, uh, a different result. OK. And then last, lastly, uh, I'm often asked, you know, what about assessment? Can you incorporate video into assessment? And the answer is definitely. What you're going to see here, let me bounce back, sorry. A uh, couple different techniques here. So this first uh, slide does not have any video on it per se, but uh, what we can do is make a choice, a multiple choice here, and then submit. Sorry, let me let me get back here. I want to get the correct answer for you. Nope. There we go. So here's video in the feedback layer. Again, seeing the, seeing the face sometimes helps learners absorb and makes it feel a little bit more personal. And again, you get the nuance, the facial expressions, and so on. So this next, next slide is an example of uh, another example of using video in the assessment. Basically, you're going to see three videos here that uh, demonstrate stopping and signaling techniques, and you have to pick the one that you think is correct. Now that one looked pretty good, so let's go ahead and choose that, and you see that that's correct. So just another couple, uh, uh, another example of, of using video um, in your in your e-learning content. So let's uh, now. I want to take a look at how some of this stuff was built. Uh, so you see, you get a better sense of um, you get a better sense of how Storyline supports this. So let me go ahead and open up uh, a project. We'll, we'll start with the Keurig video. The Keurig video. And uh, now we're looking in the authoring interface here of Storyline. So I'm going to begin by just putting a new slide in here. We'll just make a blank slide. Open up the slide, and I can insert video from a file into my uh, into my slide. So here's the here's that same Keurig video right here. Now, when you do something like the Keurig video, where you're going to provide information on a step by step thing, it's important to to think about uh, to actually map the video out here. So I'm actually watching the video. And there, okay, so right there is the beginning of step one at about six seconds on the timelines. Everyone see that here? So this is where I want to put my, my, my button. So I can add an interactive button. And I want to put it right about here. You can kind of see it in the background. Number one. Let's make it this color here so it stands out. Now, a button in Storyline can have a trigger. So what we want to do is add a trigger to this button to show a layer of information. Which layer? Well, we don't have any other layers yet, but we're going to insert a new one. So you see over here the Storyline has created the new layer when the user clicks the button. So now, what do we want to appear on that layer? We can insert a caption, something like this, and uh, say this is the info. Step one. Okay. Now, a couple little subtle things here. We want to pause the timeline of the base player, of the base layer, excuse me, so the video doesn't keep playing. The user can take their time and review the information that we gave, uh, that we're providing here in, in step one. So let's say okay there. The other thing we want to do, that step is only. Uh, only lasts for a few seconds. So we want to click on here on the, uh, the, sorry, let's get back to the main layer. So here's our button, number one, you see that? And it defaults to running for the whole slide. We don't want that. We only want it to be available for a few seconds. So if I right click on it, I can adjust the timing. So it's going to start at six seconds and it's going to, oh, sorry, I got to get over here. And we can reduce this to five seconds, let's say. 
All right, let's go ahead and preview what we've done here. Okay, does everyone see how that ties back to the original example? Obviously, it's not, it's not, it doesn't look as nice, it's not perfect, but basically we've triggered more information. We've paused the timeline of the video, essentially making the video interactive. Now, one more thing I forgot to add here. If we go to uh, the layer, we want to allow the user to get back to the video, to restart the video, right? So let's go ahead and add another button. And we'll just call this the continue button. And we'll add a trigger. So instead, this time, the trigger is not going to be to show a layer, but to hide a layer, the current layer, when the user clicks. So let's do that one more time. So we click. Now we have the continue button, which resumes the video. And we can adjust the timing on that. That probably could be fine-tuned. And then the next step would be the same process. So there you go. In terms of making a detailed tutorial based on a video, that's the technique that you would use. Let's go ahead and add a new slide. I want to show you how to use a hotspot in, in a video. So let's go ahead and add a new slide. We'll put a blank one in here. And on this slide, I have a video of a car, well, shot from a car through the, through the uh, windshield of a car driving through uh, an English town. And the idea here is we want the user to identify potential hazards as they're driving down the road. We don't want to give them any clues. We want to show them the video and let them click on what they see as potential hazards. The first one, you can see even from frame one here, we have a car that might be shooting out in front of us. So we want to identify that as the user. Let me just go ahead and run through the video real quick so you see. So here's a, hey, here's a hazard right here, right? Here's another. And I think that's, I think that's it. Okay, so we have two hazards there that we want to identify. There maybe there's some more. So the first one, again, since we can see this right off the bat, we want to make sure the user can click immediately on this. So what we're going to do, instead of a button that would give the user a clue, we want to put a hotspot, which is basically an invisible button. So let's go ahead and add a rectangular hotspot. Now, I want to make sure I get that car, and I want to extend that hotspot all the way here, because what happens to the car visually as we're driving? It's going to move across the picture. It's going to get bigger as well. So we want the user, if they don't click on it right away, to at least be able to click on it a second or two later so that they don't miss it. Now, same thing we did before, except with the hotspot. When the user uh, clicks the hotspot, we want to show a layer. Um, which layer? We don't have a layer yet, so let's go ahead and add one. So on here, we'll just put a little uh, caption again. We'll do something like this. Okay, and uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at, at that for now. We'll add a continue button. And that's going to hide the layer. One last thing I want to do is Go back to the base layer here. We only want this, uh, remember the hotspot, we only want it to last for a few seconds. So we can adjust the timer on here to, we'll move it down to uh, say three seconds. Okay, and then last but not least, we want to pause the timeline of the base layer. So let's see what we have here so far. Oh, I know what happened there. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's try that again. Hmm. Seem to have an issue with my hotspot. Let me see something. Sorry? Assign the hotspot. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, appreciate that. 
<laughs> it's good to have another pair of eyes in the audience. That's great. So I forgot to assign the hotspot. My apologies. There we go. Let's try it now. So now when the click, we have our, um, our caption, and we can continue to the next one. So just another way to make the video interactive. And this is something that, uh, you know, from a, like a knowledge check perspective, might be a really effective way to allow users to, um, uh, to, to interact with the video. Okay, instead of, um, I only have a few minutes left, so I'm not going to dive into the next demo here, uh, but let me just uh, conclude by uh, providing you with my email address. If you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, our partner, eLearning Minds, is over here at Stand 64. I would be happy to go through any of these examples in more detail or show you additional ones. Uh, also, if you're interested, there is a free 30-day trial of Storyline. You can go to Articulate.com download the free trial. It's fully functional. Um, and there's also uh, hundreds of tutorials, literally hundreds of tutorials available on the product. So you don't even have to worry about getting trained or anything like that. You'll be able to teach yourself. It's a pretty easy tool to learn um, anyway. So uh, I hope you found that informative and uh, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Hello. Yep. Um, so, do you, does anyone have any questions? Anyone? You can raise your hands. Okay. Nope. All right. Thank you. Thank you.